Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. Why do some people lose weight more easily than others? A preliminary study published in the August issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings may hold some answers. You heard everybody's ears go, what, when you said that? (laughs) The study suggests that for some people, their gut bacteria may be responsible for their inability to lose weight, despite adhering to strict diet and exercise regimens. Here to discuss are the co-authors of the study, Dr. Vandana Nehra and Dr. Perna Kashyap. Welcome both of you to the program. It's nice to have you here. Thank Thank you. you. You know, when you say, why do people lose weight easier or why is it harder for others? People are so interested in this. Uh, Does your gut bacteria really have something to do with this? So, you know, again, just like we've looked at a lot of different things which dictate how people would lose weight or not lose weight. But one of the things people have not looked at in the past are the gut bacteria. And the reason it becomes important is that gut bacteria are an integral part of our of our biology you know so they do a lot of important things in the gut and one of them is to be able to digest food that we cannot digest and in that process they will provide some energy to us so as a result our calories are not just limited to what we can break the food down into but also what the bacteria can break them down into so when we consider that i think they become a part of the equation when we're trying to lose weight by trying to diet so how, how do we get a certain good bacteria in our gut? How, how does that get determined from the beginning, whether it's good or bad? So that's more a determinant of your long-term diet. So what, what we've been eating for a long period of time determines what your gut bacteria would look like. Even though we can see some fluctuations from day to day, it's mainly your dietary habits because most people have constant dietary habits. They don't change on a weekly basis. And, and that's what determines what your bacteria are going to look like because Depending on what food you eat, the bacteria which can utilize those are going to thrive in your gut. How is the study performed? Do you just find a lot of people who say, yes, I want to lose weight, please study me? (laughs) How did you do it? (laughs) So these were volunteers who were very interested in losing weight. So they participated in a Mayo Clinic uh, weight loss program, which is a comprehensive lifestyle intervention program. So so the way this program was... uh, uh, set up was that, that, that these patients uh, were asked to be on a diet that was uh, low in calories, high in fiber, and they also were involved in an exercise program which involved mainly walking. So this, so they were the two components of this was exercise and dietary change. And then what we did is we collected stool specimens on these patients, be, on these participants rather, before they started the pro intervention with weight cha- uh, with the diet change and exercise, and also at the end of their uh, uh, end of this program. So to figure out what camp you'd put them in, the here's what their gut bacteria is, here's what these people's gut bacteria is. It's just from a stool sample you can tell that. Yeah. So a stool sample is pretty representative of bacteria within the entire gut. It's not as specific of a very specific location within the gut, but it's a good representation of the bacteria within your gut. All right, so Dr. Nero, what did those results show? So those results showed that that the participants who did not lose weight with this intervention not only had different type of bacteria, but also these bacteria appeared to be more efficient in extracting energy from the diet. And if that if that intervention is some period of time, um, how do you change your gut bacteria? If if you get into a situation where you're not losing weight and you've made dietary changes and you give up on that diet, so how long does it take before you can actually make this change? So it's, again, it's not an easy task to change the gut bacteria because, as I mentioned, it it's shaped by a lot of different factors where you live, what you eat, mm. your environment. Uh, so it's not going to be as easy as, you know, let me take something for five days and I can change my gut bacteria. Uh, so there are two corollaries. You can either say probably we should not give them this diet to lose weight because they probably won't be able to lose weight. And the other is if we say we would like for them to change their bacteria, we probably need a much longer intervention, especially if you're trying to use diet as a way of modifying. So, you know, you almost have to have a lifestyle change for a long period of time before we can hope to change the bacteria. One of the most interesting interviews that we've ever done was about fecal transplant. And if we can do a fecal transplant, why can we not do a gut bacteria transplant? I knew you were going with that. I'm <laughs> so glad that you asked that question because that was mine. Uh, you know, so so that's called like the easy way out, right? So mm-hmm. say, can we just yes, do I the want fecal- that. <laughs> <laughs> so can we just take these good bacteria and put them in? Uh, while 
it seems to be really effective in C. difficile. We know that it has not been effective in other diseases or not as effective in other diseases because C. difficile is an acute infection and it's because we've lost this diversity of bacteria and as a result of fecal transplant, we just restored that diversity. Chronic diseases are not that simple. Chronic diseases are a result of multiple factors. In fact, there was a study where they did try to take lean individuals' bacteria and transfer them to obese individuals. And while it looked promising and it improved glucose tolerance, it did not have an effect on weight. It worked for mice? No, this was in humans. Okay, but didn't we get this to work in mice once? I think yes. that's the first time we interviewed you. Yes, yes. We, d we have gotten this to work in mice, but under very specific conditions. Okay. So we can get the the lean back lean appearing uh, mice to transfer their bacteria to the obese mice but under very specific diet conditions so dr nero what does this mean for patients that you see in clinic worry about fat so, mice what about fat people <laughs> <laughs> so i think as you have to understand this was a very preliminary or a pilot study we do need some larger studies to to see how this would all kind of, in other words, pan out, you know, for the patients. So our vision is that uh, we need to develop a tool that we can identify some specific strains of gut bacteria for early kind of stratified patients into what form of therapy would be most effective for them to lose weight. And again, as Dr. Kashup said earlier on, this is only one part of the story. There are many factors that go into the makeup of obesity. So we're just focusing on a aspect and we hope that that can make a small difference in the management of these patients. If you've got the different uh, types of gut bacteria, you've got the patients, the volunteers who are in this study that you can put into the two camps, are, is there a big range? I mean, like these people have got gut bacteria that are really bad, or these people have got amazing gut bacteria. Is it able no. to, are you able to look at it like that? So the difference was not that dramatic. Okay? Okay. The difference was small, but to us what was interesting is we tried to impute from the kind of bacteria which are present in terms of what they can do. And when we did that, we found that some of these bacteria are likely more efficient in getting energy from carbohydrates. And that was interesting to us because, in fact, a dietary intervention was to take energy-dense food and change it into more fruits and vegetables. So in theory, that would be good because now you've got low-calorie, dense food. It should fill you up, and you should lose weight. But if the bacteria, which is what they should do, they should provide us with energy if they're more effective, then they may hinder that. It's not going to be the only part of the equation, but they may cause a road bump along the way. And so now are you going to do another... Are you going to do this again? What's next in this research? Well, we have a larger study that's uh, on uh, almost completed, and we are analyzing data. Let's see how this all kind of uh, settles down. So we'll probably, that for the next time, we'll let you know how that comes again. <laughs> oh, you want to come back again. <laughs> We're flattered. <laughs> that's perfect. Well, we'll hear more. And, and we've been talking about how your individual gut bacteria may play a role in your ability to lose weight with Mayo Clinic gastroenterologists Dr. Vandanda Nira and Dr. Purna Kashyap. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.